Previously on Imperium, Ferro Ulthar managed to thwart the plans of Harkon Raktet and secure a stray supply drop. Now, I am combining the battle reports from issues 16, 17 and 18 to see if Space Marines can drive back the Necrons and prevent their allies from descending into the jaws of a Xenos trap. This is edited from a Patreon livestream, so check out the link in the description below if you would like to be part of the action or if you would like to be in with a chance of becoming the owner of one or some of the miniatures involved in the Imperium series. So let's start with Space Marines turn 1 and we'll go straight into the movement phase and they have a movement of 6 inches so we'll just be pushing them straight up towards the Necrons and that should bring them within shooting range of the Necrons. So now we can go straight into the shooting phase. So one wound going through so we'll be removing a Necron Warrior and we'll just start with the one with the Gauss Flayer there at the back and they are too far out to make any charges in this turn which means we'll be moving straight into Necrons turn one. So let's get the Necron Warriors moved up and then hopefully we can get the Royal Warden involved this turn as well. And they're moving five inches and the Royal Warden is moving six. And that just brings him around the back of the container there. There you are, you can see the Royal Warden there. He's now got line of sight to the Space Marines as well. So let's do some shooting. So we'll be taking two away. So Erasmus won't be the hero in this turn. And I'll be removing one of the new members of Squad Cadron. So this is Marius Cassus. So say goodbye. And then one more will be taking a wound. And let's give that to... Oh, so that is Brother Oros of Squad Martellus there. He's now down to one wound. Three wounds to uh, Brother Oros, who was already on one wound, is out of the game. And so is Brother Ventress. So now we're on to the Royal Warden. Right, the Royal Warden with his Relic Gauss Blaster has Rapid Fire, which means that if he's within half range, he's going to be doubling his attacks. So we'll be removing another one of the Squad Cadron there. And that one is Cyrus Aria. And that is the end of Necron's turn one onto Space Marine's turn two. So we're moving the Intercessors up six inches closer towards the Necron Warriors because we want to make the charge roll a lot easier. Let's test their shooting to see whether we can take out some more of the Necron Warriors in order to make their fight phase a lot more effective. So unsuccessful shooting. So now, as I said, we're going to attempt to charge. And now we can go into the fight phase. We begin by piling in. Now let's attack. And as they charged, the Space Marines will be going first. So we'll be getting rid of uh, another one of those. So let's start with one furthest away from the camera there. So the Necron Warriors will be fighting back. So we'll do their piling, which means that all of them can now attack. So we'll be removing another member of Squad Cadron, and that one is Erasmus Torrentus. So now they're only down to two remaining. One is Sergeant Cadron himself, and the other one is Justian Despiad. And now we have done the fight back, so that is the end of Space Marines turn two. On to Necron's turn two. Let's see whether the two remaining Space Marines can actually survive this turn, or whether the Necrons will have given themselves an early advantage. So let's go into the movement, and as the Necron Warriors are all pretty much in contact, we won't be moving any of them. But we will be moving the Royal Warden to actually try and get him into the fight, and he won't be able to make any shots as the Space Marines are already in base contact with the Necron Warriors. So we'll just be moving into the fight phase. So let's do some piling in. So again, they'll all be making the attacks. There we are. So Sergeant Cadron now has a wound and we won't be doing any consolidating. So we'll go straight into the Space Marines fighting back. So we'll be removing two Necron Warriors and I will take away these two here with the Gauss Flayers. And that was the Space Marines fighting back there, which means that's the end of Necron's turn two. So now it's time to bring in reinforcements. And we'll be bringing on a librarian. Librarian will be starting down here. And his name is Rufius Vespita. And for the Necrons, we'll be bringing on a Gauss Flare unit, which is meant to be made up of eight models. But currently, I believe I've only got five. Let me just check. Nope, I've got six. As soon as these two Necron Warriors here are killed, they'll be resurrected and we'll be joining this unit here. And at this point, I will also place the objective marker at the back here. 
because for one of the victory points here, we'll be needing to get the librarian to be touching that objective by the end of turn six. And the exciting thing about this issue now is we're being introduced to the psychic phase. And now the reinforcements have arrived. Let's carry on. And the only movement available here is going to be Rufius Vespita. Let's move him towards the Royal Warden because they've only got this turn in order to destroy the Royal Warden. Otherwise the Necrons will be taking a victory point. And now we can go into the psychic phase. So let's attempt smite with Rufius there. Closest one is the Royal Warden, and he'll be taking D3 mortal wounds. So rolling a three, so that'll be two mortal wounds. And the Royal Warden has four wounds, so he's down to two remaining now. So now let's move on to the charge phase, which he fails. So I think that failed charge there may be just what the Necrons needed in order to get their first victory point, as it looks like the Royal Warden will be surviving. So let's move into the fight phase. Three Necron Warriors are destroyed, so we'll start with the two flares here as they can now just move straight in and join the new unit and then we'll remove another gauss reaper here so now the gauss reaper unit is down to three models remaining and now they can fight back no wounds there the intercessors are surviving one more round so that is the end of space marines turn three and the start of necrons turn three which means we'll be bringing on some more reinforcements now and they are coming in the form of some flayed ones so with the dimensional translocation, the flayed ones can be brought on anywhere on the battlefield that is more than nine inches away from the enemy model. And the next victory point is for the librarian making the objective. So the Necrons want to destroy him, so I'll be bringing the flayed ones on closer to him and between the objective. So the flayed ones are the Dread Devourers. So now we can carry on with the Necron movement phase. And to do that, let me just check how good the Royal Warden or Harkon Raptor is in melee. But first, actually, as it was the start of Necron's turn, because of Living Metal, Harkon Raptor is regaining one of his lost wounds. So he's now down to three wounds remaining. Right, he's a lot better at shooting than he is at fighting. But let's just do both anyway. So what I'll do is move him towards the Librarian. That way he can shoot and charge this turn. Let's also bring the flayed ones up closer towards the librarian. And they are finishing six inches away, so should be able to make that charge. So now let's get the gas flare unit involved. And we will start by moving them closer towards the space marines there. But we want to shoot with them this turn. So we'll try and get line of sight. So they are outside of engagement range and still within unit clearancy. And the Necrons don't have anyone with a psychic ability, so let's move straight on to the shooting. Starting with the Royal Warden. So Rufius is taking two wounds, meaning he is now on two remaining. And now for the Necron Warriors to shoot. So now let's move on to the charge phase, starting with the Royal Warden. So now let's charge in the flayed ones, who will be needing a six, which they fail. And I won't bother attempting a charge with the... Gauss Flare unit, as they are close enough to just pile in. Now that the charge phase is complete, Rufius is going to make a heroic intervention. And the reason I'm going to be doing this is to attempt to get him closer to the objective because he's allowed to move up to three inches as long as he's moving closer to the closest enemy unit, which means I can skirt around him, finishing there, meaning that if he survives this turn, then he's actually closer to being able to get away. So now let's pile in. So Royal Warden wants to fight Rufius there. So he is now down to two remaining. And now he will fight back. So he is destroyed. And that means that the Space Marines are now taking the first victory point and the Necrons have some catching up to do. So now on to the next fight. Let's do the Gauss Flare unit and let's do the piling in. So that is one, two, three, four, five attacks there. And that means that Sergeant Cadron is now defeated and out of this game. And now Justian Vespiad, the only remaining intercessor, has got a chance to fight back. So another Gauss Reaper is going to be defeated. And we'll remove this one here, clearing the way for the Gauss Flare unit. And that is all of the available fights done. 
So that is the end of Necron turn three, onto Space Marines turn four. And as I made the stupid mistake of getting the Royal Warden destroyed, the Space Marines are up one to nothing, and they're looking for their second victory point, which is to have the Librarian Rufius Vespita on objective one at the end of turn six. So he'll be moving towards that and hoping that he can do a lot of damage with his psychic ability and hopefully wipe out the flayed ones. Right, so movement done. Onto the psychic phase. Right, so Rufius here is going to be attempting his smite ability. So the closest visible enemy unit, which is the flayed ones, is going to be taking D3 mortal wounds. So one wound. And the flayed ones only have one wound, so one of their unit is going to be destroyed. So let's start with this one here, as he's furthest away from Rufius. And their objective is to destroy him. And I'm unable to do any shooting with the Space Marines, so let's move straight onto the charge phase. Let's see what he can do. So the charge is done, onto the fighting, and let's do some attacking. So let's just remove the back two and then they can fight back without worrying about piling in. And he's not going to consolidate anywhere. So now it is the Necron's turn and the Flayed Ones are going to be fighting back and they are melee specialists so they'll be hoping to inflict another two wounds on Rufius there and that would mean that they would then get the next victory point. So he'll be taking one more wound, meaning he's now up to four so he's only got one remaining. So let's move on to the next fight which is going to be the remaining intercessor Justian Vespiard. And he's going to be attempting to wipe out the remaining Gauss Reapers there. So we'll be removing one more of the Gauss Reapers, meaning that that unit is now down to one remaining. And now we're on to the final fight, which is the Gauss Flare unit. And I'm pretty sure that with the pile in, then they can all attack. So although he fought bravely, it is the end of the battle for Justian. And that means that now it's just the Librarian Rufius Vespita against all of the remaining Necrons. So that is the end of Space Marine Turn 4 onto Necron Turn 4. And the only available movement is the Gauss Flayers and Gauss Reaper of the Necron Warriors. So let's just move them all up. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that since the Librarian is within engagement raid of the Blade Ones, that the remaining Necrons can't shoot at him. So we'll be moving on to the charge phase. So successful charge there, let's move him straight in. And then we can go straight into the fight phase, starting with the Necron Warrior with the Gauss Reaper there. So he's just gonna pile in and then attempt to inflict the final wound on Rufius there. So he's not gonna be the one to claim victory over the Librarian. But that now means that Rufius gets to fight back. And he would be doing D3 damage, but since they only have one wound, I'm not going to bother making the roll. I'm just going to remove one of the flayed ones there. So that's one less model for him to worry about, but there's a lot more incoming. So I'm not liking Space Marine's chances, considering that when the reinforcements arrive, that Necrons already have the upper hand, as they've still got one complete unit and two partial units on the board. So now it's a Necron attack and I haven't attacked with the flayed one yet. So let's attack with this last remaining flayed one here. So now the only available fight remaining is the Gauss Flare unit. So let's do their pile in. And again, we want to be as tactical as we can here, getting as many of them into fight as possible. So only one of them can't move quite close enough to fight. So we've still got seven of them remaining that are close enough to actually fight this turn. And we'll just finish up with a little bit of consolidation here. So let's completely trap him in by moving these warriors around. So Rufius can't escape and now they're close enough so that every single model there will be able to attack him when they get to fight back. And that is the end of Necron turn four and the start of Space Marine turn five which now means we're bringing on some reinforcements, starting with some Primaris Aggressors. And the Space Marine's second reinforcement is 
uh, Lieutenant Felicia Sandranus. And then for the Necron reinforcements, we've got a unit of Scorpec destroyers. And the Necron's last reinforcement is the Techomancer, who is seeing his first bit of action in this report. He's only recently been given away. So now let's go into the movement phase and we will start with the Primaris Aggressors. So the objective for these Primaris Aggressors and the Lieutenant is to destroy the Technomancer before the end of turn eight. So for their movement, I'm just going to rush them straight up the center of the board. And then Felicius is going to move around the back of this container. You can just see the tip of his pistol there. He's finishing over there, so that now he can make a straight run for Tecmar the Technomancer. But now we can move on to the Psychic phase, and Rufius is going to be attempting his Smite Psychic power. So on 2d6 we're looking for a 5+, plus, which he fails, and also if you roll a double 1 or a double 6 when taking a Psychic test, that unit immediately suffers Perils of the Warp, and... When a Psyker unit suffers Perils of the Warp, it suffers D3 Mortal Wounds. And as he only has one wound remaining, we won't even bother rolling for that. He's just going to be destroyed. Which also means that every unit within 6 inches immediately suffers D3 Mortal Wounds. Uh, so there's 3 units within range of him there. So let's roll for them. We'll start with the remaining Gauss Flayer. Actually, I don't know why I'm rolling, because there's only one in this unit and he only has one wound, so let's remove him. And the same for the flayed one. So, flayed ones are out of the game now, but we will roll for the Gauss Flayer unit to see how many models are being removed from that. Only one. So let's remove the one that's furthest away from the action. And now that means that because the Librarian Rufius has been destroyed, that the Necrons are going to be gaining one victory point bringing it back level with one all. So it's all down to this final one. So the Technomancer needs to survive until the end of turn eight. So that's the end of the psychic phase. So now we're on to the shooting phase. And Felicia Andranus here is going to be using his neo Volkite pistol to shoot into the gas flare unit there. So we'll remove the one that is closest to him. So now that unit is down to six models remaining. So the Primaris Aggressors here have a range of 12 inches. So they'll be shooting at the Gauss Flayers there. And they'll be using their Flamestorm Gauntlets. And that has the ability that each time an attack is made with this weapon, that attack automatically hits. And the Flamestorm Gauntlets are type Assault D6, which means to find out how many attacks they're going to be making, we're going to need to roll. So let's do that now. So, 6, 12, 18, 20, 22, 23, and they're all automatically hitting. So, so far this is the most amount of dice we've had to roll in one go. So let's see how many wounds we could potentially be inflicting. So, looking for 4 plus to wound. Let's remove all the fails, because there's quite a lot in there. Right, and that leaves us with seven successful wounds. Right, so that doesn't have any AP. So the Necron Warriors are looking for four plus to save. And they're failing five of those. So let's remove five of their unit. And again, we're going to be wanting to remove the ones that are closest to Felicius to make the charge roll harder. Still the wound marker from Rufius. So that unit is now down to one. And with that, the shooting phase is complete. Let's do some charging. So now if Felicius wants to make the charge, he's going to have to roll at least a 10. Which he doesn't, so failing the charge there. And as there are no eligible units to fight, that is the end of Space Marines turn 5, on to Necrons turn 5. And I will start with a little bit of a tactical move by moving this Necron Warrior 
towards Felicius there, but more importantly between Felicius and Tecmar. And then we can bring Tecmar into the action, use him for the first time. And he is equipped with an optic cloak, meaning that the bearer has a move characteristics of 10 inches and the fly keyword. So we've moved him all the way down there. And now, as I said, that was a tactical move putting the Necromoria there because with him being three inches or within three inches of Tecmar means that the Space Marines have to attack him first. So I'm just sacrificing him a little bit there just in case. And now we can also bring the Scorpec Destroyers into action. And they have movement of eight inches and we'll move them straight towards the Primaris Aggressors. So they are finishing just within charge range. And that is the end of the movement phase. And Necrons don't have any Psychers, so we'll be moving straight onto the shoot phase. And we will start with the Necron Warrior, who is going to be aiming at Felicius Andranus. And he has one attack hitting on a 3+, plus, which he fails. So now let's move on to Tecmar, who's also going to be shooting at Felicius. And he's using his Staff of Light which is Assault 3, so he'll be having three attacks, looking for a 3 plus to hit. Failing one, but making two. And looking for a 3 plus to wound. So one successful. And that has an AP of minus two. So Felicius is looking for a 5 plus to save, which he makes. So not taking any wounds there. And the Scorpec Destroyers don't have any ballistic weapons. So that is the end of the shooting phase. Now we'll move on to the charge. And we will start with the Necron Warrior here, who's just looking to tie up Felicius. And he's only five inches away, but only getting a four. So failing that. Now I mentioned that I'd moved the Necron Warrior there so that Felicius would have to attack him first but I'm going to ignore that and attempt to charge. So uh, needing a seven for that, but Tecmar's only getting a five, so he's failing. So maybe the Necron Warrior will be making a noble sacrifice. But now let's find out if the Scorpec Destroyers are able to charge into the Primaris Aggressors in order to stop them from using their Flamestorm Gauntlets. So the closest one is 10 inches away. So let's see what the dice will do. Oh, getting a nine. So they're also unable to make the charge, which means that no units are eligible for fighting. So that is going to be the end of Necrons turn five, onto Space Marines turn six. And I'll be starting with Felicius. So he will move there, which is far enough outside of the engagement range of both of them that he is able to shoot, but also close enough that he can make the charge without failing so that he will get to fight first. Right. So the aggressor's movement is five. And at this point, I could move the Primaris aggressors close enough so that they can also shoot at Tecma because that is the final victory point and would ultimately end the game. So let's move them five inches towards Tecma there. So hopefully Felicius can take out the Necron Warrior and then the Primaris Aggressors can shoot at Tecmar. If not, then I will use the Primaris Aggressors to shoot at the Scorpec Destroyers. So let's move on to Felicius rolling to shoot at the Necron Warrior there. He gets two attacks with his Neo Volkite pistol, looking for two plus to hit. Making both. And looking for a three plus to wound. So both successful. And that has no AP. So the Necron Warrior is looking for four plus to save. And he's making both. So the lucky Necron Warrior there is holding on for this space and also making it more difficult for the Space Marines there. So I think, as mentioned, because they can't shoot the Primaris Aggressors can't shoot at Tecmar. They're going to be shooting at the Scorpec Destroyers, who should all be, yeah, they're all within range now anyway. So let's begin by rolling the 2d6 
for each of them to see how many attacks they're going to be making with their Flamestorm Gauntlets. Right, so we have two sixes, so 12, 17, 21, 23, 25. So 25 attacks that will automatically be hitting. But as the Scorpec Destroyers have a toughness of 5 compared to the Aggressor's strength of 4, they're going to be needing 5 plus to wound. And that looks like a lot of fails there, so let's get rid of all of those. Quite a few sixes in there as well though. I always think that when you roll a six it's a shame that there's not an ability where something explodes or does more damage and that leaves us with eight successful wounds. And they have no AP, so the Scorpec Destroyers are looking for 3 plus to save. And they are only failing one, and they each have 3 wounds, so this one here is now down to 2. So the Aggressors have plenty of attacks, but because of the lack of AP, not able to make many wounds. So now we're going to move on to the charge phase, and as I mentioned, I put Felicia Andranus close enough to the Necron Warrior that he now doesn't have to make a charge roll, it will automatically be successful. So let's measure the distance of the of the aggressors and get them to charge the Scorpec destroyers. The closest one is six inches away, but are the dice on their side? Yes they are as we're getting a seven. So the Primaris aggressors finishing their charge phase there and they're all close enough that they can then pile in and attack all of the Scorpac Destroyers there. So now let's move on to the fight phase, beginning with Felicius Andronis here, going up against the pesky Necron Warrior. And with his Power Sword, he has four attacks, looking for a two plus to hit, making all of them. And looking for threes to wound. And he's making all of them. And that has a AP of minus three which means that the Necron Warrior is unable to make the save roll. Finally, he is out of the game. So what I'm going to do now is pile in. So I'm going to pile in this one at the back. In base contact there, touching the barrels there. So that I can then pile this one in this side of the barrels. just about fits in there and then pull him in that way and the Primaris aggressors are finishing their pile in looking like that so now let's roll for their attacks uh, so with the melee for the flamestorm gauntlets is just the wearer's attacks so the aggressor sergeant has four attacks and the aggressors have three attacks each so the sergeants will be red and the other two aggressors will be blue and they have a weapon skill of three plus but each time an attack is made attract one from the attacker's hit roll so they're going to be needing four plus to hit here let's move the failed so four successful hits and the strength is times two or strength eight we're going to be needing a 3 plus to wound. So failing 2 and making 2. And they have an AP of minus 3, which means the Scorpec Destroyers are going to be needing 6s to save. So saving 1 and failing 1. And the Gauntlets do 2 damage, which means that now this Scorpec Destroyer that had 1 wound already is destroyed. So now there's only two Scorpec Destroyers left. And now that the charging units have both fought, it's the Necron turn. And we will start with the Scorpec Destroyers there. 
So we've got this one in the center here who has the hyperphase reap blade, whereas the other one here has the hyperphase threshers. So let's see what they do. Uh, so with the hyperphase threshers, it has the ability that each time the bearer fights, it makes one additional attack. So this one here will be making four attacks, whereas the reap blade will only be making three. So the threshers are the red dice, the reap blade is the blue, and we have seven attacks in total. Looking for three plus to hit. Let's remove the failed ones. So the Thresher's only making one successful hit, whereas the Reap Blade, all three are successful. So now let's roll for the wounds. And the Reap Blade gives the user plus two to its strength. So the Reap Blade will be needing three plus to wound, whereas the Thresher will be needing four plus to wound. So the Reap Blade making two successful wounds there, and the Thresher making one successful. So now for the saves. And the Reap Blade has an AP of minus four, so the Aggressor is unable to make the save. And the Thresher has an AP of minus three, so the Aggressor is going to be needing a six to make that save. But he's only getting a three, so failing. The Reap Blade has a damage of three, so with two successful wounds that's going to be going up to six. And the Hyperphase Threshers has a damage of two. So that is eight wounds in total. And the Aggressors have three wounds each. So we'll be taking these two out of play. And that one's not in engagement range. So I don't think that he'll be taking any wounds. So now that means that we've only got one more fight to resolve. And that is Tecma. So let's begin by piling him in. And then we can make his melee attacks with his Staff of Light. And he's got one attack looking for three plus to hit, which he makes. Mm -hmm. And looking for a four plus to wound, which he makes. And that has an AP of minus two. So Felicius is looking for five plus to save. But only getting a two, so he fails, so he'll be taking a wound. But he has five wounds to begin with, so now he's down to four. And that is the end of Space Marine turn six. On to Necron turn six. And the only movement available is the Scorpec Destroyers. So they're going to be moving so that they're two inches away, or just over two inches. That way they can do their charge, which they will not fail, and then they can be the first to fight. And as the Technomancer is pretty weak in the melee, I'm going to fall back with him this turn. So I'm going to fall back with Tecmar, and because he's got the fly keyword, He's able to move past the container, ignoring the vertical distance. So with his Canoptic Cloak, he's moving 10 inches. So that he finishes directly the other side of that container. So then Felicius shouldn't be able to then move and make the charge on the next turn. We'll find out whether that tactic works for them or not. So we'll move straight onto the charge phase. And as I mentioned, I placed the Scorpec Destroyers so that they can't fail a charge roll, so they're just going to move straight in, staying just outside or within, outside touching engagement range, so that then they can pile in and both finish off the Primaris Aggressor. So let's roll some dice and find out his fate. And again, we've got one with a Hyperphase Reap Blade and one with Hyperphase Threshers. So we've got seven attacks in total, and it will be the Hyperphase Threshers on the red dice, Hyperphase Reap Blade on the blue dice, and we're looking for three plus to hit. So failing one with the Threshers, but all the others are successful. So now for the wounds, we're looking for three plus on the blue and four plus on the red. So, all successful. And the Reap Blade with its AP of minus four means that the aggressor cannot make the save. So it will be taking nine damage just from that one weapon, which is more than enough to take it out of the game. So as it stands currently, 
the Necrons are in a pretty good position for them to get the final victory point, giving them a 2-1 victory, but it could all still change. And as there are no more eligible units to fight, that is the end of Necron turn 6, onto Space Marine turn 7. So let's begin by moving Felicia 6 inches, straight down the back there, so that now he's got line of sight with Tecmo, and that way we can do some shooting. And he has two attacks with his Neo Volkite pistol, looking for two plus to hit. So both successful. And looking for three plus to wound. So one wound with no AP. So Tekmar is looking for four plus to save, which he fails. So he'll be taking a wound. And that is his first wound of the game, meaning he's down to three remaining. But he does have living metal, so he can get them back. But as that's the end of the shooting, we're now going to move on to the charge phase. And if Felicius can get in close enough with his power sword, he may be able to get the victory point now. So he needs to roll a four in order for the charge to be a success. But he's only getting a three. So he's failing that. And that is the end of Space Marine turn seven. On to Necron turn seven. Right, so let's start with the movement phase. And tactically, it's probably better to just run away with Tekmar. But that would be boring. So let's start by moving the Scorpec Destroyers, see where they end up, and see what we can do. So 8 inches takes them all the way to there, which means that they won't fail their charge. So they'll get to fight first, and as they're outside of engagement range now, I would be able to shoot first with Tecmar. So let's just go for Total Wipeout. And if we move him so that he also won't fail his charge, Actually, it was the start of their turn, so he gets a wound back anyway. So Tecmar's now back up to full wounds, so four remaining. He can also shoot, and then they can both charge. Right, so onto the shooting phase. Tecmar has three attacks with his Staff of Light, looking for a three plus to hit. So failing one, but making two. And looking for a three plus to wound. So failing one, but one successful. And that has an AP of minus two which means that Felicius is looking for 5 plus to save, and he's getting a 6, big Zorpa Zorp 6 there, so he won't be taking any wounds this shooting phase, and that now leads us onto the charge phase, which, as I already explained, I've set up so that it can't be failed, so let's just charge the Tecmar in, and we'll charge the Scorpec Destroyers in there as well. Right, so let's begin with Tecmar, so with his Staff of Light, he's looking for a 3 plus to hit, Getting a 5, and then needing a 4 plus to wound, Ooh, which he just gets, and that has an AP of minus 2, so Felicius is looking for 5 plus to save, which he fails, so he'll be taking another wound. So he now has 2 wounds, meaning that he has got 3 remaining, and because the Scorpec Destroyer is also charged, they're going to be fighting before him, so let's roll for them. So again, we've got seven attacks. The Hyperphase Threshers are on the red dice. Hyperphase Reap Blade are on the blue dice. And we're looking for three plus to hit. So only failing one with the Hyperphase Threshers. And because the Primaris Lieutenant only has toughness of four, means that both of these weapons will be wounding on 3+. plus. So only failing one with the Reap Blade. So we're looking for him to roll a 4+, plus because with his Storm Shield, he's then got invulnerable saves. So he's making two from the Threshers, and one from the Reap Blade, so failing one of each, and the Reap Blade does three damage, but as he's only got five wounds in total, so three wounds remaining. On that note, Felicius has been defeated. The Necron Tecnomancer Tecmar has now survived, which means the Necrons are getting an extra victory point, leaving us at a final score of Necrons 2 to Space Marines 1. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.